your favorite websites have been blocked. In the last six or seven years, I've had the wonderful opportunity of visiting hundreds of colleges, companies, and organizations across the country. And what I've noticed is that most colleges, most companies, most organizations across India have this extremely, extremely, extremely bad habit of blocking access to all your favorite websites on the internet. I'm sure many of your colleges and companies are doing the same thing. So the next time you want to access a website that has been blocked by your college or blocked by your company, stop worrying. Because today I'm going to show you how easy it is for you to unblock access to all your favorite websites on the internet. So first of all, before you can unblock access to your favorite blocked websites on the internet, it is important to understand how exactly does a college or a company block access to your favorite websites. So typically what they will do is they will maintain a database or a list of blocked websites. And right on the top of that list will obviously be youtube.com, facebook.com and all the fun and interesting websites on the internet. Next what they will do is they will monitor each and every website address that you're typing into your browser. And they will copy the website address and compare it with the list of blocked websites that they have maintained. So if what you type appears in the block list, you get blocked, you can't access the website. For example, if you try typing youtube.com or facebook.com uh, into your browser, since Facebook and YouTube appear in the block list, you get blocked, you can't access the website. However, I'm not saying that this will work each and every time, but maybe you can try to make this work. If you try typing say anonymizer.com, then chances are that anonymizer.com will not appear in the block list and you will be able to connect to it. And once you have connected to anonymizer.com, then technically you are outside the filtering mechanism of your college or company. You are outside the firewall of your college or company. And now that you are connected to anonymizer.com, you can use it to continue to access all your favorite blocked websites on the internet as simple as that. So anonymizer.com is a great example of something known as a proxy server. A proxy server is fabulous because a proxy server allows you to unblock access to all your favorite blocked websites on the internet. So let me now give a live demonstration of anonymizer.com to all of you. Now, anonymizer.com, you can connect to using any browser from anywhere in the world. So as soon as this presentation gets over, all of you can go back home and start using anonymizer.com to start accessing all your favorite blocked websites on the internet. However, there is a slight problem. And the problem is, when you try to use anonymizer.com, this is the problem that you will face. The problem is, unfortunately, this website is not free. It is going to ask you to enter your credit card information. And only once you have paid this website 80 US dollars, which is around 5,000 Indian rupees, only then can you actually hide your website using anonymizer.com. And I'm very sure that everybody attending this course rather give out their IP address than give out their credit card information on this website and that to a hacking website. So I'm not even saying that you should enter your credit card information on this website. I'm not even saying that you should make any payment to this website. All you have to do instead is simply start your browser and simply connect to the Russian equivalent of the same website which is anonymizer.ru 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 like the name suggests it seems like a Russian website it may or may not be but the point is that 
uh, anonymizer.com is an American website. It's a company and they ask you to enter your credit card information and only once you pay them 5,000 rupees can you use anonymizer.com to unblock access to your favorite websites. But on the other hand, anonymizer.ru is completely free, no credit cards required, and at the same time, it allows you to unblock access to your favorite block websites on the internet and also hides your IP address on the internet. So once you're connected to anonymizer.ru, let us see what we want to do next. On the right hand side top corner of the screen in this space provided, you just have to type in the website address that you want to visit anonymously. I just typed in google.com. Next you have to click on whatever looks like the go button. You don't need to know Russian for this. And within a few seconds, hopefully if everything goes well, anonymizer.ru will connect to google.com, fetch the web page and display it on the screen. Google will think that somebody from Russia is trying to connect to its website, but in reality it is you sitting right here in India accessing google.com absolutely anonymously, safely and securely. So if all of you look at the screen, what do you notice? The Google website has been displayed, but let me zoom in a bit. Do you need, notice something different? Everything has been displayed in Russian. So this proves to you that this very point of time, all of us have successfully managed to fool Google into believing that we are not in India, that we are not in, you know, wherever city, I'm not in Bombay. And instead, Google thinks that I'm somewhere in Russia. So anonymizer.ru is absolutely fantastic. It allows you to, just like any other proxy server, so both anonymizer.com and .ru are proxy servers. So like any other proxy server, this, these websites will allow you to hide your IP address. They allow you to hide your location. So instead of India, they think uh, Google thought that I'm in Russia. It also allows you to unblock access to block websites. So you can hide your IP address, you can hide your location, and you can even unblock access to your favorite block websites on the internet. So th that is the beauty of proxy servers. So anonymizer.com and .ru are great. However, please remember, very soon, even your college authorities will figure out that you are using proxy servers like anonymizer.com and .ru to access blocked websites like YouTube, Facebook and some other interesting websites on the internet. So they will start blocking these websites for you. So what do you need to do uh, to continue to access these uh, websites? So you obviously don't want uh, if your college has blocked anonymizer.com, if your college has blocked anonymizer.ru, what do you do? So I'd like to actually share with all of you a very funny real life incident that happened to me many years ago. This happened to me 10 years ago. I was doing a two day training workshop for all the Wipro employees in Bangalore. So when time comes for me to give the demonstration of anonymizer.com, I started my browser and I tried to connect to anonymizer.com. But for some weird reason, the website was not getting displayed on the screen. And after a while, it started getting a little bit embarrassing for me because, you know, I'm supposed to be a hacker and if my demonstrations don't work, it's not the best situation to be in. So I thought that there is maybe something wrong with the internet connection. So I tried to connect to google.com just to check whether the internet is working or not. And Google.com got displayed on the screen within a few seconds. So I knew that there was nothing wrong with the internet connection. So I went back to the other window, refreshed the page, and I was hoping that maybe now anonymizer.com will get displayed. So I waited for a few minutes, and finally anonymizer.com did not get displayed on the screen. And instead there was a small error message that showed up which said, 
Wipro has blocked access to anonymizer.com because it is illegal for employees. And when I saw that error message, I was completely shocked because that was the first time I realized that companies have actually started blocking access to proxy servers like anonymizer.com. And what made things worse for me was the system administrator of Wipro, the IT administrator of Wipro, who manages the entire security, he was sitting in the audience. Even he saw that error message, and as soon as he saw that error message, he kind of started laughing, saying that, oh, I have blocked it. And as soon as he said that, all I did was I looked at him and smiled and said, just hang on for a minute, just wait for a minute. And all I did was I opened a new window and simply tried to connect to yet another website known as samair.ru slash proxy. And within a few seconds, samair.ru slash proxy got displayed on the screen. And this time, the Wipro administrator was completely shocked completely silent and the rest of the employees started laughing and some of the employees who had cell phones with them started SMSing their other friends or colleagues uh, about this new website so that even they can start accessing all their favorite blocked websites from within the Wipro campus. So the moral of the story here is if your college blocks anonymizer.com simply use anonymizer.ru and if your college blocks even anonymizer.ru, then simply use samair.ru slash proxy. I repeat samair.ru slash proxy. Now, this particular website, the samair website, is slightly different, slightly unique. So let me quickly open it up for all of you. So if you guys look at the screen, this is what the samair.ru slash proxy website looks like. So on this website, if you notice, there is an entire list of different proxy servers classified by the respective countries or the locations has been displayed. In other words, if your college has blocked anonymizer.com or anonymizer.ru, all you can, all you gotta do is you can start using absolutely any one of these different proxy servers from the SAMAR website to continue to access all your favorite blog websites on the internet. As simple as that. And now if your college wants to block you, they will have to one by one manually block each and every one of these different proxy servers. Which in my opinion is an extremely, extremely difficult task to perform. But let's assume that your college is really motivated and they one by one start blocking all these different proxy servers. Even in that case, the absolutely, absolutely best thing about this website is the fact that on the screen you can see maybe 10 different proxy servers. But if you scroll down, there are 30 more such web pages. So in total, there are maybe around 600 or 700 different proxy servers classified by various countries that are available on this particular website. So if your college now wants to block you from accessing all your favorite block websites on the internet, they will need to block all 600 proxy servers one by one, which in my opinion is almost an impossible task to perform. So never ever get blocked again no matter which college, company or organization you are a part of. The website address is samair.ru slash proxy. Now a very common question that I get is how to use these proxy servers. Because in anonymizer.ru there was a particular space where you could just type the website address that you want to visit. But in this case, this is just an IP address of the proxies I mentioned. So how do you actually use these proxies? So if you actually look very carefully, on each line there is an IP address mentioned and there is a colon followed by some number. So this number after the colon is the port number. 
So before the colon, you have the IP address of the proxy, and after the colon, you have the port number of the proxy. So if you want to use any of these proxies, all you got to do is go into the settings of your browser. So I'm using Google Chrome. So I click on settings, scroll down, uh, click on show advanced settings, and then there will be an option which says change proxy settings. So I click on change proxy settings, and then click on LAN settings, and there will be an option which says use a proxy server. So in that um, option, I first of all enable that option. And then in the address field, I type in the IP address of the proxy server. And then type in the port number of the proxy server. And I click on OK. And I restart my browser. And now my browser is configured to connect to this proxy server. As simple as that. So similarly, you can follow a very similar procedure or similar steps can be followed. Uh, on other browsers as well. So it's not restricted to just uh, Google Chrome. Most of the browsers have a very similar procedure that you need to follow. So that's samair.ru slash proxy. There's yet another very interesting website which I like to share with all of you. And the website address is hidemyass.com. And hidemyass.com has something similar. It's basically a proxy service which allows you to hide your IP address on the internet and also um, access blocked websites on the internet. So if you connect to this website, it will ask you to sign in or log in. You don't need to do any of that. Just scroll down to the bottom and click on go to hide my ass proxy. And once you go to the, uh, once you click on that link, once again scroll down and then type any website address that you want to visit. So I have just typed in google.com. I can click on show advanced options if I want. And then you can specify which country server you want. So you can choose random or different specific countries. You can choose whether you want encoded URL or encrypted URL. And then click on hide my ass button. And within a few seconds, hopefully it will connect to google.com, fetch the web page, and display it on my computer screen. Google will think that hidemyass.com is connecting to it. But in reality, it is you sitting right here in India connecting to google.com. But your IP address remains hidden. So if you notice it did not work, I can always refresh the results. It will come back soon. So sometimes if the proxy server that you had tried earlier doesn't work, simply change the proxy server that you chose from this drop down button. Just choose something else and then try again. As simple as that. So there are thousands of proxy servers on the internet. Some of them will work at a particular time while others may not work at particular times. But keep trying. Hide my ass is fabulous. It's actually extremely reliable usually. And I use it a lot when I want to stream American movies or American TV shows through the internet. Now, we have seen a wide variety of different proxy servers. Now, there is one quick difference, or one small yet pretty important difference between these proxy servers. Some of the proxy servers they do not do any URL encoding. In other words, if you look at the URL, it doesn't change. So the URL is, uh, in this case, is facebook.com. So the facebook.com URL is still appearing. But if you use, if you look at hidemyass.com, they perform URL encoding. So if you look at this screenshot, the word facebook.com is not appearing anywhere. So by using URL encoding, you're making it harder for the college or company or the government to block you. So some websites support URL encoding, while others do not. So depending on how strict your college or company is, you can accordingly choose the proxy server that you want to use. 
Now there's another thing that colleges love to block or companies love to block, which are torrents. Now I can totally understand why colleges and companies block torrents. Because number one, bandwidth is limited. If there are thousand students in a college, if say 999 students are using torrents and one student is trying to do something related to their studies, then the 999 students will eat up all the bandwidth available and the one student who is serious about studying will not be able to access his you know, assignments online. Secondly, it's illegal. So if you use torrents to download a movie in your college, then the IP address that you're using is the public IP of your college. So the, the Hollywood production company in the US, they can take legal action against your college's public IP. So legally your college becomes liable for the illegal torrent download. So these are the two main reasons why colleges or companies block torrents. However, today let me show you how easy it is to unblock torrents. Now, whenever you want to unblock something or hack something, first of all, you need to understand how it works. So, how are torrents blocked? Typically, what a college or company will do is, they will disable the installation of torrent clients. So, they will not allow you to even install a torrent client. Secondly, what they will do is, they will block the download of .torrent extension files. Dot torrent extension files. So essentially if you're not allowed to download or if you're not allowed to install a torrent client or you're not uh, allowed to install the torrent software and on top of that any file with an extension dot torrent gets blocked by the firewall of your college then torrents will no longer work. So let us now see how you can bypass these two layers of security and unblock torrents. First of all, there's a very interesting website known as bitlet.org. Bitlet.org allows you to convert your browser into a torrent client. So even if you don't have a torrent software installed, even if you don't have a torrent client installed, all you gotta do is open your browser to bitlet.org. In this space provided, copy paste the torrent meta file URL and click on the download torrent button. And as soon as you click on the download torrent button, your browser itself will become a torrent client and it will start downloading, downloading the torrent file for you. So the first layer of security has been compromised. Without installing a torrent client, you are able to download the torrent file. The second website is torrent2exe.com which is even better. Torrent2exe.com allows you to convert your browser into a torrent client. At the same time, it will convert the extension of the torrent file from .torrent to .exe. So your college or company will think that you're using your browser to download a .exe file, when in reality, you're actually using your browser to download a .torrent file. As simple as that. So that is how you can unblock torrents in your college, company or organization. So now that we have seen a wide variety of different ways using which you can hide your IP address or use a proxy server to change your IP address, let me now discuss a very important concept which is how to commit a perfect computer crime. If you remember the five steps of a hacker that I had mentioned in the previous lecture, step number five was to escape without leaving a trace behind. No criminal wants to get caught. No criminal wants to get arrested. So what does the criminal do? The criminal can perform the following four simple steps. And if the criminal performs these four steps properly, it will ensure that the criminal can escape without leaving any trace behind. No police, no government in the world can trace a criminal back if these four simple things are implemented properly. First of all, your IP address needs to be hidden. The number one way in which the police or the government can trace you back 
is on the basis of your IP address. But already in, in this lecture, we have seen a wide variety of different ways in which your IP address can be hidden, in which your, uh, your IP address can be changed. So I will not repeat it. Uh, typically, if you use a proxy server like HideMyAss or Anonymizer.ru, you can actually change your IP address. The second way in which the police or the government can trace you back is using your MAC address. So let me now spend a little bit time explaining to all of you 